Hey, what's up folks? Gray here, and today we're going to look at how to properly store lamp oil as well as a few additional tips and ideas that might benefit you down the road. So if you own one of these guys right here, this might be the video for you. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, folks, so let's look at a proper way to store your lamp oil. There's some do's, do's and don'ts that you may want to be familiar with, and uh, I would like to go over those because some people have had questions, and I had a really good conversation a few weeks back with some folks in chat. So let's look at this. Usually when you buy lamp oil, for let's say you have an oil lamp, uh, usually you're going to buy some sort of container that looks like this, which is your standard lamp oil. Um, you can see how clear it is, um, but here's the key issue. Uh, lamp oil is very, very, very on the same spectrum as kerosene and paraffin, which are known to be solvents. That's why they're also known to uh, be used in cleaners, uh, as well as to eat plastic. So I know some of you folks may say, well, these are both plastic. These are two totally different types of plastic. Another issue with using this versus using this. Now, this is what they call a kerosene. You've probably seen something like this. It looks like a gas container. You've seen them in yellow, which is diesel. Well, blue means kerosene. Being that these two are very, very similar, I'm going to store my lamp oil inside a container like this. Uh, and the reason I say that is because let's look at, let's, I'm going to go over a couple of things here. So you get this nice big bottle of lamp oil, right? You start to try to pour it in here. Now, most of the time, I would suggest using a, fil uh, a, a filter. And what I mean by that is you, anytime you get lamp oil, sometimes you might want to use a piece of cheesecloth uh, and kind of a, and a funnel to kind of filter any particulates that may be in this, be it dust or debris or anything like that, as well as keeping your lamp oil clean as well, because eventually sometimes dust and debris will get in here. It, your fuel will just burn a lot more efficiently. Now, there is a difference between these two. Kerosene will burn a lot brighter uh, than lamp oil will. And also, here's the, the con to that, is that kerosene usually has a very nasty smell to it and has a lot more pollutants. So basically, lamp oil is a refined version of kerosene, uh, so it burns a lot more cleaner. And this is something that you can use indoors. Uh, of course, with anything that has flame to it, you want to ex you know, express caution with it. Um, so let's kind of get into this bottle, okay? And the reason why I take this bottle and dump it into my storage uh, and now you can look at, I think it's CFD Publications, oh God, whether it's her name. She has a website. I'll post it down below. Um, but lamp oil in itself, if stored properly, will last indefinitely, uh, according to those publications. And the reason being is that you have to store this, of course, in a, you know, always in, I always say cool, dark, dry place. Uh, but it, it basically, here's a key factor with lamp oil. You want to keep this roughly at room temperature. For you folks out there who probably use maybe more of, this, more of these often than we do down here in Florida, here's a big precaution that I'm assuming a lot of you folks know, but some of you may not. Uh, because if you ever get lamp oil and it freezes, um, and then you go to defrost the lamp oil, you risk uh, exposure to an explosion because as it uh, defrost, uh, it can explode. And some folks don't know that, and then once that explodes, that can create fire, of course, uh, and some other issues down the road. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. You can find these publications across the board, uh, and a lot of folks who have experienced with this over the last 50 to 70, however many years that lamp oil has been around. Um, and like I said, it's just a cleaner form of kerosene. Now, also, let's kind of focus in on this bottle like I was talking about. Uh, when it comes to this and you're pouring this, if you ever spill any of this on the outside of this bottle, um, it's going to start to eat away at this bottle. Also, as this bottle, if let's say if you're using this bottle and it gets halfway down and you start to squish it uh, or anything like that, it's going to create micro fractures. So when there's a micro fracture in this bottle, that's going to let air in. And of course, that's going to start a process. Everybody knows oxygen is a monster when it comes to a lot of things. So that being said, you want to avoid keeping things long term in this bottle. I know there's going to be some naysayers out there. There always is. But to effectively store lamp oil for long periods of time, it's better to use a container like this kerosene 
uh, I think this is what, five gallons is kerosene can versus a bottle like this, especially if you want to store it in large amounts. Now, sure, you can have a little bottle like this, but just be aware of the dangers associated with it and also, the, you know, with the, with the micro fissures in this or the micro fractures or whatnot, uh, you can start to get lamp oil to leak through it because that's going to open up to air. And then, of course, again, like I said, the oils themselves have a tendency to eat through plastic over time. Uh, something like this is made for long-term storage versus something like this. Now, what I would suggest if you're going to use a kerosene container like this is you want to take a big piece of tape, uh, basically duct tape or something like that, and write lamp oil on the side or just label this one in general. Like you could label it right here or on the side and make sure that you label it lamp oil so that in case you do have kerosene in your home and use it for other purposes that you have the two differentiated. Um, because let's say you have something that's specifically geared towards kerosene versus lamp oil, but they're, like I said, they're very similar related. But that being said, let's kind of also talk about the lamp itself. When you buy one of these lamps uh, and you want to use it for, you know, lighting, uh, some people have even used it to, you know, kind of warm up next to because it does give off some sort of heat. Uh, you always want to make sure that, of course, your reservoir down here is going to be clean. And a lot of folks make mistakes uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera. See where I'm going here. Some people will take this wick and have it way too high, uh, and then it creates all that soot and that nastiness in here, and it doesn't burn effectively. You really want to keep this as low as possible, and I'm not sure if the camera's doing a good job of showing this, but you really want to, usually about a quarter inch, uh, a little bit right there, just above there to be the most effective and to get the most long life out of the oil that you have in this reservoir down here. Um, by far, to me, the Dietz uh, lamp oil, uh, lanterns are some of the best in the business they've been around for a very long time also you don't want to forget to get more wick uh, these big round ones here last quite some time uh, and they're easy to stock up you can stock these up on your shelf you can get a few dozen of these and make sure that you always have enough of course and again you know storing your lamp oil so this to me is going to be a little quick way to that you can kind of like learn how to properly store your lamp oil so that you can get the best shelf life out of it so you don't have any emergencies or issues with explosions and stuff like that. Now down here in Florida it's different. Room temperature here is pretty much consistent. Um, but you know, like I said, anywhere where things can freeze, let's say you store this stuff in a garage uh, out in let's say northern Wisconsin. I always follow the Wisconsin just because I know so many folks out there or Alaska or wherever you guys are from. Uh, they get you know below freezing temperatures. Roughly, lamp oil freezes about 15 degrees. Once it hits about 15 degrees, lamp oil will freeze, and that defrosting process can uh, have a possible to explode, which creates more of a nightmare for you. Uh, but that being said, you want to keep it inside. If you have a like a, a storage place, uh, I, I don't know, you know, a garage or whatnot, and uh, and store it properly. I feel that this is the better option than this. Now let me ask you a question. What do you think? Would you do you think this is a smart choice? Do you think uh, you know? Is there what ways do you store lamp oil? Are you in a cold environment? Have you ever heard of someone having that explosion due to lamp oil defrosting? What lamp oils or what lamp uh, uh, what oil lamps do you use? Uh, and do you store additional products like the oil and the wicks to go with it? Now, uh, just to kind of wrap this up, some folks may well you know I have a flashlight, I have a generator, I have a solar. Uh, stuff like that, but maybe you want to conserve the energy in those batteries. Maybe you don't want to use the gasoline in your generator. So having something like this that can help you walk your way to an outhouse per se, or in your home, or outside checking on the garden, and you just want something portable uh, without using your batteries uh, or your other fuels to charge, you know, let's say your batteries and whatnot, this might be the option for you. Other than that, uh, this is Gray Man, and uh, I just wanted to wrap this up and say thank you for watching this. If you got any value out of this, please hit that thumbs up button. And I really want to start saying something. I want you to know that be safe because you're not alone. All right? God bless. This is Gray Man, and I'm out. <music>